when something comes over you, I always say it's like a storm, you know, and then there's a, you have a little bit of thunder, and then there's that moment where lightning strikes, and then the idea forms. For me, it was uh, in 1996, where I heard the thunder. I was doing a project for Life magazine. Okay. And it was the film Romeo and Juliet, and they wanted me to do a photograph that captured the entire cast and crew. And so when I got to the set, actually, I realized that they wanted me to do a three-panel photograph, three pages yeah. pull out, and the set was a square. And I just was so frustrated because I'm thinking, how am I going to make a three panel photograph out of a square? I shot 250 single images of the entire scene. And I said, hey, for this one photograph, everybody stay as you are except Claire and Leonardo. And so I came back to my studio and I put this image together. And when I saw them, I had this aha moment that I realized that this is crazy. I'm changing time in a photograph. It took me seven days to do this by hand. And I thought, oh, I love that, but I, I don't know if I can do this regularly. Right. And then 16 years later, a thing called Photoshop was invented, and I really was able to take this concept and do it in a way where it was seamless. And that's where it really started to happen. And that, that actually happened in uh, 2009. So you like held on to this yes. idea for 15, 16 yeah. years before yeah. you could actually implement it. Yeah. Everybody thinks that especially now that's everybody right. thinks of instant instagram insta feelings insta insta instance you know instacart insta food that's exactly and there's something to be said about the beauty in the wait and waiting for something to happen sometimes you have a, a thought and an idea and it's time is just not right and when you have passion projects when you have ideas that come from deep within i think there's no end in sight but you, you can't just give up on them there's so many times where so many great people who are we consider the best of the best and whatever they do if you really look at their arc and where they came from, right? It's like they were knocked down so many times. Right. They could have just, you know, given up and gone a completely different Yes, direction. the resiliency to yeah. keep going. Yeah. I, I have stood seriously in one place. The longest was over 21 hours without sitting down during an active volcano. No um, way. I, I don't think there's ever been like a deeper study of a single place in a day than what I do. Yeah. Because I'm I'm bearing witness. I am literally looking at the same frame, right? The same scene for 24 to 36 hours. Now knowing the process, I'm sure you get it all the time, like what keeps you going, right? You know, and it's, it's, it is the process. It is the work. 10% talent, 90% work. Yeah. That had to have been, yeah. like you said, biblical moment. Things I get to see, honestly, they change your consciousness. Yeah. Because when you get to study wildlife for 24 to 36 hours, you see behavior that most scientists don't see. Right. You know, part of the thing I'm interested in doing is like, how do I bring other people, you know, on a big, big, broad level to be able to have that kind of experience? Be like the next. Trying to bring people into a way of looking uh, and through my process in a way, they become really inspired by what they're seeing. First of all, I just, I mean, thank you for doing this. Oh, it's uh, a pleasure, man. Uh, when I was uh, kind of doing, I mean, because we really, you know, we just met, really. Yeah. And so I was doing my own kind of, you know, research on you, and I was watching your TED Talks, and there's actually more than one. Yes. And I watched both of them, and I, it reminded me of the day we met, because the way you describe things, it, it reminds me of, like, like how how I describe things, like, but but, like, you do a better job, but it's like, I feel like people don't like can't express sometimes like what they're thinking and what they're trying to accomplish. And the way you describe it in your TED talk, it's it's fascinating. It's like a scientist talking about his his oh, uh, your weird. pictures. And um so I guess I want to take you back uh because day and night has been something you've been doing for over a decade. Is yes. that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's almost 14 years now. Yeah, yeah. So I would love to take us back and like tell me. I know you mentioned that that you got this idea, but like, you know, no one no one's heard it out of your, you know, fresh. So I I mean, recently, especially sure. not me. I would love to hear just if you could take us back to that moment where where you came up with the idea, you know. It's a 
it's such an interesting thing, I think, in terms of, and, and I think you know this too so much because you are very creative, brother. And I think when you're, uh, when something comes over you, I always say it's like a storm, you know, and then there's a, y you have a, a little bit of thunder and then there's that moment where lightning strikes and then the idea forms. For me, it was uh, in 1996 is where I heard the thunder. I was doing a project for um, Life Magazine. Okay. And it was the film Romeo and Juliet. And I was photographing Baz Lerman. You know, he basically was the director, and they wanted me to do a photograph that captured the entire cast and crew in one photograph. It was kind of paying homage to the the great 1940s, what they called the big picture that Life magazine I used to do. I think it just do. came up on the yeah, screen yeah. too. And so when I did this photograph, um, I, when I got to the set, actually, I realized that they wanted me to do a gatefold. So it was a three panel photograph, three pages yeah. pull out. And the set was a square. And I just was so frustrated because I'm thinking, how am I going to make a three panel photograph out of a square? You know, photographically, it just wasn't making sense. Right. So I was inspired at that moment by David Hockney. He was doing these things, these photo collages, where he was shooting hundreds of images, you know, together. And then he would paste them by hand and open up the way he was seeing this, the scene. And so I thought, well, maybe I could do something like that. And so what ended up happening was, I shot 250 single images of the entire scene, created this sort of a gatefold image of all these images. But as I took pictures, I had Claire Danes and Leonardo in the center of the photograph as you know, Romeo and Juliet, and I had them embracing in the center. And then when I panned my camera, there was a huge mirror about 25 feet tall. And, and when you look at the mirror, uh, in the mirror is a reflection of Claire and Leonardo and the cast and crew, you can see them in the mirror. And I said, hey, for this one photograph, everybody stay as you are except Claire and Leonardo. I want you to kiss for this one moment. Yeah. And they kissed. And so I came back to my studio and I put this image together. And when I saw them suddenly embracing in the middle, and as I panned my eye to the right, they were now kissing, I had this aha moment that I realized that this is crazy. I'm changing time in a photograph. Yeah. And that was the beginning of it. And I have huge respect for Hockney. Like I, I, I it, it took me seven days to do this by hand. And I thought, oh, I love that, but I, I don't know if I can do this regularly. Right. And then 16 years later, a thing called Photoshop was invented. And I really was able to um, take this concept and do it in a way where it was seamless. And that's where I really, that's where it really started to happen. And that, that actually happened in uh, 2009. I had an assignment to photograph the High Line in New York City. So you like held on to this yes. idea for 15, 16 yeah. years before yeah. you could actually implement yeah, it. Yeah, and I think that's that's a great... I, I'm, that's I, a great, yeah. like, just... Uh, for me, it speaks to no days off in a way. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is like, like people, everybody thinks that... Especially now, that's everybody right. thinks of instant, Instagram, Insta, Insta feelings, Insta, 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 Insta you know, Instacart, Insta food, that's exactly. And there's something to be said about the beauty in the wait, and and waiting for something to happen. And actually, my my church is actually doing a series on 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 waiting, which is interesting. But um, talk a little bit about that, like how. No, I'm, I, I love know? that you said that because I think there's so much truth in that. And and really, if just think about the work itself that I'm doing. So my work, normally I will spend 24 to 36 hours just looking at a place, taking individual photographs. And then I, you know, will take them over the course of time. So day to night. And then I merge all these images together. But then I'll spend as much as a month editing the photographs, it can take three to four months of post work before the fin if image is finished. So you're looking at such an enormous amount of energy just in the time of creating this thing. And I think when you think about time and people, to your point, I think about this idea of you have an idea, you have a concept, something is, is brewing inside of you. And you're right, people think that unless it happens right away, you give up on it, you move to the next thing. But I think there's, great value in being able to, uh, sometimes you have a, a thought and an idea and it's time is just not right. But you keep that in a book, you know, what mm -hmm. I say, you keep it in the back of your mind, you don't let it die, uh, and you come back to it. And I think that's kind of one of the things I learned in this process was, I began to understand that if I could step away from something, not give up on it, 
but step away from it and something else would happen in my life, this idea of technology right. could suddenly give me an access to this idea in a way that I never imagined. And that's really what happened. So it took 16 years, no, it's a but I didn't give up on the idea. Yeah. And, and the same thing the way you are, you know, the, this concept of, of no days off, of the whole, of, of what you've been building, I feel like that's very much, I, th I think, you know, um, people who are, are doing things that they love, that they're passionate about, uh, that they uh, that speaks from inside of who they are as a human being. I think those things are are drivers. And when you have uh, passion projects, when you have ideas that come from deep within, I think there's you know there's no end in sight. But you you can't just give up on them. You know. Yep. I think the frustration of of when people say no. I you know the story with Michael Jordan how you know he could make his uh, high school yeah. basketball team. You know, it, there's so many times where so many great people who are we consider the best of the best and whatever they do if you really look at their arc and where they came from right it's like they were knocked down so many times right they could have just you know given up and and and, and gone gone a completely different yes direction. the resiliency to yeah. keep going yeah i tell people all the time like everybody you know just they assume that you were born this way or that you, you know you were gifted or whatever and i tell people always i'm definitely not a superhero but if I was, my gift would be consistency. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not strength yeah. or it's not uh, any kind of like special sauce. It's just literally I've shown up for myself every single day. And I've ethic. never given up on an idea, a concept. And to give you an idea, like my wife got me into Pinterest. I don't know if you're into Pinterest. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, So it's like a... It's like, like a rabbit hole. Visually. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely yeah. like a rabbit hole. But, it, but for me, it's like... A, because I used to do like vision boards and stuff. Sure. So to me, it's like a digital vision board, yeah. right? And I'll never forget, I was vision boarding or Pinteresting this, like what we're sitting in, in 2017. So that's why, that was another thing. It reminded me, like your story reminded me of like, sometimes you get the idea, but you have to let it, allow it to come to fruition. Like you got to let timing. I also, I actually, one of my favorite TED Talks is they said the number one thing in business is timing it's not money it's not the product it's not it's actually all the pieces lining up and and i actually think that like this water the timing of this oh yeah is like something different so also too like what i'd love you to describe is to me <clears throat> people don't people only see this finished product and like it took me watching the ted talk to really understand again it, it kind of reminded me of the water dog like Unless you know what what it took to get that done, right? The level of appreciation doesn't really, and and I think like it almost needs a video to describe describe the process, the yeah. process, yeah. And I guess I would love for you to talk about like like it's it's got to be physically challenging too. Uh, yes. it's not just mental and creative, but it, it's also physical because you're you're literally stuck up in the air or down in a tent, like wherever. So talk about, talk yeah. about the mental, sure, the mental strength the, yeah. Yeah, that you have yeah. to have I mean, to do it, that. It is, it's interesting, you know, people look at me and they go, um, first of all, they say, God, you're so patient. That's the first thing <laughs> they bet. say, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's like, but what, what the truth is, is uh, I find myself, and, and I'm sure for you too, when you're, the, the act of what you do, once it starts getting those endorphins going, it's like you don't want to go anywhere else, right? Man. You know, it, it is a drug. And for me, when I when I photograph, the act of seeing becomes this drug, and it's almost like a deep meditation. And so I will, I I have a level of misery that I can basically go through almost anything if I'm seeing something really incredible. Yeah. So in other words, everything just goes away. I can't feel the fact that my legs haven't moved in 12 hours. I don't feel that, you know, it, wow. you know I'm always asked, like, when do you go to the bathroom? You know, cause I stand for, I have stood seriously in one place. The longest was over 21 hours without sitting down during an active volcano. No uh, when way. I, when I photographed the Icelandic uh, uh, in Reykjavik, that was, you know, basically going off every eight minutes. And are these, are these, um, have you ever looked in to see if this is a Guinness Book of World Records? I, I know that. I don't <laughs> you know. Might, I don't want yeah, to. I, I'm you sure. probably would be the photographer that wins all the records. So <laughs> but it, that sounds I, extraordinary. I do think that one of the things that's kind of interesting about what I do is I don't think there's ever been like a deeper study 
of a single place in a day than what I do. Yeah. Because I'm I'm bearing witness. I am literally looking at the same frame, right? The same scene for 24 to 36 hours. So the things that I see, and I think the the way I, I um, things that I glean from these experiences, mm. that's the power of it, I think, honestly. You're right, yes. Is it mentally challenging? Oh, it's unbelievable. Try watching TV for 12 or 24 hours, right? Most people can't do it. It's, and it's not that, I, um, I'm actually thinking about time in that manner. I think I'm so worried about missing a magical moment, like something comes into my frame. Right. I'm, I'm watching this story unfold in front of my lens that is, it's not over there, it's not over here, it's right here. And so the act of being present for me is so powerful. You know, it's something that we're, we're fighting against as human beings today, yes. right? I mean, how many times, you know what I love about the gym here? Like I come in, I don't see any TV screens anywhere. Yeah. I love it. It's very that. intentional. It's, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. And you're, you're saying, you know what? It's time to focus on you. Yes. And, 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 and I get to focus on me. And, and, and the cool thing about that is, so it was very intentional because I, I really felt like there, there was a, there was a, you know, you walk into these traditional gyms and there's 30 TVs everywhere and people are in with their headphones on. And so I wanted to create a space where you walked in, you knew it was time to work. You knew exactly. that you were there for you, but <clears throat> excuse me, but by doing that, so by creating an environment for someone to have an exceptional experience to become their best self in the fitness area in that in that arena the workout the the class whatever they're doing even if they're just coming in to do cardio and stretch or coming in to do the cold plunge whatever it is that they're coming into by creating that for someone by that person doing it you're also allowing others to do it that then creates this community of people doing it yeah so then all of a sudden you're you're having conversations that are positive you're meeting new people i mean i could tell you how many we have legacy babies we have marriages here really? so it, what That's it good. does for me is it creates an environment that is is healthy right. it is creating a healthy environment and it was one of those things that i feel like is why we came out of the pandemic so strong is because when the pandemic happened, you really saw how, how community was needed. You saw how we needed church. We needed, you know, like YMCAs. We needed Bible studies. We needed group. Like, we needed people. You know, exactly. you could, and, and all that isolation only made us worse. It made us sicker. It made us more depressed. And People so need people. People need people. And then that will never go away. And I, and I love being able to provide an atmosphere or an environment that allows people to be people and to communicate and to become better versions of themselves together because it's certainly a lot easier to do it together than yeah. alone it's so. it's fantastic the, the idea of the way you've sort of set that up because you're, you're right you're gonna you're gonna have this interaction naturally because if everybody's you know isolated in their headsets and they're you know and they're watching staring tv the staring, and, yeah. and they're looking and watching the news watching, and being right, right and being depressed <laughs> and and so you know it's it's this is like the antichrist of what the general yes uh, scene is i think in many, so it's many it's places. a it's also uh, very backwards so if you go into traditional gyms you have the aerobics room right you know that's like glass i call it the fishbowl and it's like exactly it's like everybody if you ever like go into a gym and you look in that fishbowl if they're having a class you're almost like like, man, that room is hopping. Like, everybody's bouncing around right, and right, right. music and stuff. And you feel like you're not doing anything. Yeah. And so I wanted to flip it. So our aerobics room is in the middle of the daggone gym. So it's creating the energy for the whole gym. And I will say it's not for everybody. Like, there are certain people that enjoy the headphones and walking sure, in. Sure, and, sure. I, and that's fine. And there's nothing wrong. But you can do both, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so this is it. Yes. And the thing that I loved when you just started describing it was... Um, yeah, this shows you the whole image. So here they are embracing. Uh, this is the middle of the photograph. And you can see the outline of the actual frame. That was is that, is, So this is the whole crew? This is the whole cast and crew. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and then you can see no there's way. some famous actors in there as well. Wait a minute. Then, so the, yeah. the image the, in the mirror is, is different the, than exactly, the image. In, so exactly. you did change time. I changed time, yeah. And that was the amazing thing. And when you, when you sort of see that for the first time, like I said, the, the idea of a spark, right? Yeah. This idea suddenly comes into your head and you go, wow, this idea of time changing in a picture. And really, I think the, the exciting thing is about if you stay with something long enough, right? Yeah. You, you, you nurture it. Some, sometimes it's, it's a matter of like, um, you know, coming back to that idea and saying, well, that was a really good thought, but you know, 
maybe maybe something will happen that'll I'll be able to revisit that. So you keep it alive in your mind in a way. You write it down, like I said, in a book. But then I, when I saw this technology shift in, it really happened in 2000, 2003, this thing called digital was invented. Yeah. And that's really where, that was the game changer because I started to think about photography in a whole new way. I didn't want to just make pictures that were like all my other photographs because I'd mastered, you know, um, large format, you know, I was shooting Kodachrome. I was shooting um, four by five, eight by ten film. So I was a film, you know, nut. That's yeah. all I shot, and I had that sort of level of craft and mastery. Uh, I was one. I always say I'm blessed. You know why I was blessed? Because I came up through the analog period, had to master it, and I was just at the right age to come into digital still and be able to so master that. I got the best, of both, I got the best of both worlds. And I say to people, you know, when. The idea of traditional, and I'm sure you experience this too, in the way technology has changed in exercise and, and, and the way people adapt now to different machines and new technologies. If you have a traditional approach, your brain is wired a certain way. When you take on that new technique or that new technology, you think about it differently. You work differently, you know what right. I mean? But because you've had the traditional, it makes you better, I think, at the new stuff. Oh, one, it's and, almost and, like yeah. you're more educated. Exactly. And also, I mean, and again, this is me not knowing, but like kind of thinking about it is that you can pull some of the traditional stuff into the new stuff. Exactly. And so now you're combining the best of both worlds. That's that's right. And then that's what really sets that's you apart. Really set because you these part, new yeah. kids don't know what you know. They don't have that background. Right. No, no. And it's like When I said, did you start? Like when was your first? I started... Believe it or not, uh, first pictures were taken through a microscope when I was uh, 12 years old. 12 years old? 12 years old. I now, wanted... did you know when you were 12 that that's what you wanted to do? I wanted to be a, a scientist, a doctor. My yeah. father was all set. He's like, yo, this is my son, the doctor, you know? It was it was the great plan. Yeah. And my dad was a chemist. He was a flavor chemist, so he was very scientific mind. And uh, my mother was, a, uh, was an opera singer, so my mother was very creative. My dad was creative, too, but he gave... In the, you know, in the early days when you were... Growing up, you know, in the, in the you know the thirties and the forties, being an artist wasn't a, a career. It was right, just nobody did that. Yeah, and so my dad was, you know, business, 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 and he just saw me as someone who had the scientific mind. He figured, oh, the kid wants to learn about microscopes. It was called photo micrography. It was a, a, and I and I was intrigued by the whole idea of taking pictures, and I took the class, and that was it. I was smitten. I think the act of discovery for me has always been about what my life is i love i'm a very curious person and so the act of discovering and looking at something those two worlds collided through a microscope in ways that you know you know i'm sure the first time you touched a weight and you just you know what i mean <laughs> no it, you're right it you're makes right. you feel certain i remember way. i remember you like don't want to do my any, dad yeah. giving us our first weight set and having that experience but then also like the experience of your dad taking you to your first batting cage sure you're first uh, rec center where the, you 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 shot the basketball like you know sports in a way yeah. i think i see that's why i like i hate the way society like separates everything mm. like artists are artists yeah athletes are athletes like i don't know so if you many remember, crossovers there's so, so many, many crossovers and there's so many similarities yeah. and there's so much to, in my opinion there's so much like to me there's there's if you think about it, think about like what keeps every gym kind of the energy going. It's music. Yes. So the crossover between music and fitness is very similar. I, when I introduced a, a street artist, he came in and he graffitied the inside of my gym in 2009, one of my first gyms. Immediately, like as soon as he finished, the whole energy in the whole gym changed. Wow. And he did this like amazing angel in the corner. And... It was like, and right then and there, I was like, this needs to be in my gyms. Like, like art needs to be yeah. in my gyms. Cool pictures, cool cutout, you know, quotes yeah, yeah. and things I like love that. that. You know, so yeah. I wish that people would, you know, it's kind of like, like to me, one of Kobe Bryant's like unbelievable achievements was after basketball. It wasn't even during basketball. Absolutely. That's you know? he did. Every, yes. Everything, you know, he, he, Kobe was so gifted in yeah. so many different ways. But I think that's such a great point is this idea it, it's so unfortunate that people do compartmentalize us you know athletes artists, you're a photographer that's you're a photographer it. that's yeah, it yeah. yeah it's like and the truth is you know it's funny one, one of the, i'll share something interesting with you yeah. I've, I've had a, the blessing of, of photographing a lot of great great athletes over the decades and i'll tell you one thing i've noticed is this idea of what the zone is you know when, mm -hmm. when people are feeling that thing yeah. and i'll tell you what 
I feel the zone when I'm in a creative space. I think the zone lives in, and it crosses all boundaries of, not, it's not just creative zone, it's the ex, whatever it is, it's, it's that spot in your mind where everything just flows. Yeah, and, that and flow the, state. That flow state, and, yep. and, it, and it's, I always say to people, it's like, okay, if you could, it, we don't, there, we don't get opportunities, especially nowadays, to relax our mind. There's, you know, that's the one muscle that doesn't get to relax, right? right? Yeah. And when especially you, in this digital world, exactly. like you said. And and so so you come in here and you 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 get to a certain place, and all of a sudden, the body starts to function like what it's, it's like supposed, it's supposed like to, it's supposed exactly. to, and what it's thinking about <laughs> right. is thinking about pumping blood and getting all these things going. And all of a sudden, that mind is is now like in a different kind of state. And I'm. I'm always interested in like, you know, people always ask me, well, when do you get your best ideas? I said, well, I love when I'm in a shower or, or when I'm, if I'm exercising or going for a long walk, whatever I'm doing, that's, that's that moment. If I walk on a beach and I'm looking for rocks and I'm picking up, mm -hmm. it's, it's something, it's an act that is very simplistic, but those are the moments that you get to really cross-reference everything that's a, what you think about. And people always ask me, how'd you get that idea? Well, you know, it comes at a moment sometimes where I think people... Uh, we, 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 if we could all get to this place, it'd be magical. And I think once you begin to understand how you work mentally, where your best thoughts are, when things are clicking for you, why on some days you come out, uh, you get out of bed and it's like, man, everything is going like this, right? right? And then other days it's just not going that yeah. way. Why is that? And I, I question that a lot. I, I do too. <laughs> yeah. And I started thinking And I try it. also, yeah. I don't know if you do this. I try to like, I, I try to like Groundhog Day those best days, right? Yes. Yes. And then you're like, okay, I ate the exact <laughs> same thing. I went to like bed at the exact same time. Yeah, exactly. And it still didn't work, you know? And then you, you, you know, you yeah. go through that. But, but I've, I, what I've learned is that, um, it's about that this flow idea, and the flow idea happens through being able to stay um, in in a, in a mindset where you don't have the stress, you let go of things you have no control over, mm -hmm. and I what I like to say is is that you just allow the universe to come to you in a way, and and when you do that, man, good things come to you. Uh, so many times I go out and I do these pictures, I can't tell you, people say to me wait, you went out for one day and you got that sunset and you the animals showed up and this and that happened. Yeah. I never, I always know I'm in for a challenge when I get to work, but I do all this homework before I get out there. And you know about homework, Manning, because you do that all the time. But once you're in it, you got to let go. And this idea of letting go is when the magic happens. Because when you can just be present. Present. And that's the thing. Everything comes to you in a way. And I think that's, I think that's, when you really begin to feel those those special moments that we talk about that zone did you you just got back from the antarctic right? yes yeah, yeah i was there, actually not the antarctic i was uh, i was there for the the eclipse that was but i recently the canadian arctic canadian arctic. yes yes and that was tell me what that was for again well, that was an amazing project i was working on and this is one of those moments that where it didn't work but um because for the first time in 30 years i was photographing beluga whales okay and um i was actually built a um a scaffolding uh it's an inlet on a place called somerset island and it's quite a distance to get out there i mean this is really remote remote area and uh, you fly you, in you fly in it's uh they they built a runway on this island it's unbelievable only one kind of aircraft can land there and they have you know these wonderful tents and it's a run run by a family they they own the island and they um gave me permission to basically set up a scaffolding during low tide so we built a scaffolding at low tide. I was about 20 feet above the ground, 15 to 20 feet. And then the tide comes underneath us. No and way. when the tide comes underneath us, it's about five feet below me. So you can imagine. So you're right how, over the we're water. We're right over the water. I was there. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, <laughs> standing for 12 hours. And how okay. cold is it? Oh, we're talking, I'm, you know, it's, it, you know, temperatures are zero. <laughs> and you're, you know, you're standing still. And you're and, stuck. Yeah. And, you know, you're stuck there and there's no way they're getting me unless once the tide changes, which is 12 hours. Oh, wow. That's when they can come back out to get me. And uh, we're excited. The weather, it's, by the way, there's no sunset in those places because it's 24 hours of daylight. So the sun literally moves like this around oh, you like wow. that. But it was an incredible experience. But I will tell you, um, sometimes when you go out and you do something, you don't think you're going to. Um, you, you have the best intentions to, to learn about something, but sometimes uh, in, in, I don't like using the word failure. Mm -hmm. I always like 
using the word experience because I think from everything we do, there's always something that's learned from that experience. I say right? there's no losses, only lessons. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And that's that's exactly right. And yeah. I felt like I learned something on this where I learned something about in real time how wildlife are really adapting to the what we're experiencing, this thing called climate change. Yeah. How for, for the first time ever, I was mentioning 30 years ago, for the last 30 years, we're looking at an area that had ice, you know, generally, if for two weeks in July, the ice is supposed to break apart. And these beluga whales come in with their babies and they literally play, they feed. And because it, the water is very shallow there, it's only about five feet deep, uh, the orcas do not come into this area. So they're safe. You know, okay. They're not hunted by predators. Right. And we were looking for, to see almost a thousand belugas that would normally come in. And we had no whales that day, right? 12 hours, I never saw a wow. whale. And what happened for the first time was the water temperature went from four degrees centigrade previous year to eight degrees centigrade. So it was actually double the heat in terms of the actual temperature of the water. That you would think would melt ice, right? right. That but there was no wind this year. Oh. And because without wind, the ice won't move. So unless you have a strong northwesterly or a big storm, there's no movement of the ice. So the, the whales will not come in to an inlet unless there's clear air between you know the water and the sky. Right. So the babies can sound because they need to breathe much more frequently than the adults do. And so... I kind of watched this whole thing and I saw the way the belugas would, they would send scouts in. I did see a, a few whales, but they were always scouting to make sure that it was safe for the other whales. Oh, wow. And they communicate underwater. So there's an astounding level of communication and adaptation that's happening in real time that I'm very lucky enough to witness. Yeah. And so part of what I do is, yes, my storytelling is in my photographs, but also... I get to share these stories of what I'm witnessing. Your experiences. You know? Yeah, I'm experiencing. Yeah. And you got to shoot some polar bears, right? Yes, yeah. yes, I did. Which I did. polar bear is probably yeah. one of my favorite animals. Oh, they're, they're so just badass. incredible. What you would, Atanshi, I, I flew a drone out uh, a mile and a half. Wow. And I was able to locate a polar bear with a cub. And, and literally, she was hunting. And the baby was following her. No just way. to watch them interact. That's insane. It was insane yeah. just to watch the baby follow. Right. And try to keep up with mom. And mom's thinking, I got to get this food. You know, look, don't. Will you hurry up? You know, right, right. That kind of behavior. You get to see this interaction. That is so I mean, cool. it's incredible. You know, I, I think there's. That's the thing that the, the great gift, I think, is that. You know, we we're all connected. Everything is connected. I see it firsthand when I do this work. Yeah. And I and I think that um, it gives you just a, a level of appreciation. And I think in many ways it changes your consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, about the way we look at the world and the way we see things. And I I'm excited about that. I'm excited about how, you know, hopefully my work begins to affect people in a way where the power of the beauty of what they're looking at is actually affecting them to where they want to they see it begin to see it maybe the way. I'm looking at it and maybe the and way where, indigenous where would you people say, look at it. Like is the best place for people to find your work, you know, so you can really see it. Is well, it your website? Yeah, or? my website okay. for sure. You know, that's so digital. Steven, Steven Steven Wilkes. Wilkes. Com. Com. Yep. And then my Instagram. But I, I think, uh, and then I, I show very often and my show announcements always come on those, you know, we'll okay. be on those channels. Right. So as everybody, you have yeah. to check out like your day and night stuff is and I don't Thank know if it's you. night and day or day or night, but it, I know you change it. Day like, night, yes. Sometimes it goes this yeah, it way goes, and this way. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, depending but on the vector of time. It's incredible. Like, it, it's some of the coolest stuff. And then just now knowing the process, knowing the 24, 36 hours you're shooting, and then I didn't realize, too, that you're you're literally waiting for these moments. Yes. So that you can drop in. Yeah. There's this. nothing automated about yeah, it, brother. That's you, know? you know, it's like somebody saying to you, hey, hey man, do you have that machine that pumps you? You know, yeah. no, no, it's like, no, no. There's nothing on yeah. that. It's all work. Man. Right. And you know, and that, that's the thing, like you were saying earlier about like, okay, what what defines you in a way? You know, it's it's the consistency. But it's the consist it's I look at you and I say, it's not just the consistency, it's the work ethic that that drives you. You know, like you you, the, and I think that's the thing. I, people always ask me, what's the secret sauce too, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's 10, it's 10 percent talent, 90 percent work. That's yeah. what it is. 100 percent, right? That's Definitely. what it is. And it's, you know? and, it, and I would say, like, I'm sure you get it all the time, like what keeps you going, right? You know? And it's, it's, it is the process. It is the work that keeps me going. Like every time I finish a project, every time I finish an idea, you start thinking about the next idea. Exactly. Like, you know, because that's like, why, why wouldn't you? Well, like, you know, that's been the joy, honestly, just to work with you on, on, you know, this no days off. And, yeah. And the, 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 the dog that we just, uh, you know, finished and 
so excited about. Yeah, we gotta we gotta, we gotta show, show the water the dog. dog. Yeah. I always so I'm one. I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. I'm just I've always lived my life like that, and and like I told you downstairs, when Dan brought you to New York or you are in New York yeah, yeah, when yeah. we when we first we came met, in, we first met, and just hearing you describe this idea of the water dog, it was crazy because. A lot of times I feel like when I describe stuff, people don't understand what I'm talking about. So when you were describing it and I understood it, I was like, oh, this is going to be a match made in heaven. I was like, I was like, because I know exactly, like I saw you what saw, you I, saw. That was so great. You know, yeah, and yeah. I know it, 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 it formed a little differently yeah, than, yeah, it, yeah. than it did in our mind, but it actually came out better in my yeah. opinion than uh than what we even like but that's what so, that stuff. was so cool yeah I, I love that yeah well when i when i first met you i could see you know what i love about you is your enthusiasm and your passion yeah. i can get that and i'm the same way and i think one of the things that i always look for in any kind of relationship um is you know um when people uh, have a certain level of passion it's like they're sparkers you know they spark people yeah and i love that like and i could see you're you're one of those people you like to surround yourself about people who are going to spark you're going to spark them they're going to spark someone else yep and that and then it creates this whole thing like you're doing in here in the club with this idea of 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 of, of creating all the energy in the center and it goes outward yes i think that's very similar to the way i think about working creatively is you want people that are going to be as passionate about what you're doing and the brand and the idea behind the brand is possible and and I think that's when it starts to have a life, you know, of its own, where it really has its own presence. Yeah, I mean, I my biggest thing is has always been belief. Like, if you don't really believe no, in what you're doing, you can't sell something you don't believe in. Right? Then it's like, yeah. what are you? And why? Yeah. Why are you even doing it? And so for me, it's always been this unwavering belief that this dog will be as big as the swoosh one day. Like I have said it for. 14 years now, 15 years, you know, and, and we're still not there. Like we're still not there, but I think that I'm starting, I'm starting to see in the beginning, it was like me, 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 me. And, and I knew that wouldn't, that would never be, you know, that would never get me there. It, it, would, it needed, I needed to connect the dots with other people that believed what I believed. Right. And that's hard to do. That's hard to, to get. And then all of a sudden your family starts to believe in what you're doing. Your brother starts to believe your business partners really start to believe, yeah. you know, then they introduce you to another person that brings in money. And then that person brings in creatives. Like, you know what I mean? Like then yeah. all of a sudden these dots start to connect. Yeah. When you've been paddling the boat by yourself for so many exactly. years. Now all of a sudden you got more people in the boat paddling and you got momentum. All yeah. Of a sudden. It's, it's incredible. It, it changes it's the it's whole. really, it's, it's special to see. And, and I, I feel like we're just touching the surface on the things that we're we're going to do, you know. Yeah. So no, but but you know, but you could see uh, one of the things I liked when I we first got together and I saw the product, tasted the product, it was like, and the, the dog, you know, I said, oh, I love this dog. <laughs> it's like I could see how much time and energy, you know, the craft you went into, and and there's there's like a you know, it's a personality. It's a it's and that's and there's a story in it, and I and I I love that, and I and I think there's a story in what you're doing, and I think that's really important and i think just not enough people um you know there's so many things out there but but people don't talk to the people that are are actually using your product in a yeah. way you know what i mean there's no communication and i think there's an opportunity with what you're doing to share your knowledge share the way you you see this whole um health and fitness and um and and and, tr and translate it in a way that's really powerful did you ever see the movie pay it forward yeah so that it's another kind of moment like you you were talking about when you had your moment during the Leonardo the Romeo and Juliet yes. thing. Um, for me, when I saw that movie, like you know, I'm emotional, cried, you know, like you know, we're, I was literally taking notes and then, and I literally remember watching that movie and literally saying, "I'm gonna have an impact like that on the world," like and like knowing it, you know. And right. I don't think I've gotten yeah. there yet, yeah. but I think that through this no days off and through the messaging, I think we can get there and, yeah. and have that similar pay it forward moment where we're being intentional that we're taking no days off on ourselves. And that's why I feel like I'm drawn to you too, because your life is, is literally no, your everything you do is no days off because yeah, you no. couldn't do what you do without that commitment every day. Like yeah, there's no, no way. Like, yeah, no, it know? is. It's, it's a total, you're right. It's you know? a belief. And you've system. been at it for, yeah. 
20, no, 30, uh, it's 40? It's going on five decades. <laughs> so I'm yeah. not trying to yeah, age yeah. you. No, no, no. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, great, yeah. So Four not, decades right, at least. Yeah, 40 um, years, yeah, yeah, right? 40 years, Which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And, I mean, I think that, again, it just goes back to, like, the world we're in now where it's just people don't believe in that consistency over time is what compounds and what creates results and yeah. what creates you. And you just got to keep going. Like, That's just it. keep going. Don't stop. And if you have a dream... If you have a, an idea, see it through, see it through because right. you're going to fall down. You're going to have moments where you go down. But if you can just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you learn how to stoke that fire. Don't yes. you? It's like I always I like that analogy of a fire. And I think sometimes people don't realize that, you know, you, 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 you build something and it, you, you know, the moments it's boy, it's, it's just I'm cooking, man. You know, yeah. you're cooking. And then all of a sudden it starts getting it, but you got to go back in. Put more wood on it. Put some yeah. more wood on that. And, yep. you know, maybe you got to change a little thing here. Yeah. Open a little more air. It's it's that kind of thing where, you know, um, it takes persistence, obviously, drive, all those things. But it's it's also got to be, you've got to be curious enough to want to um, be open to new ideas and new ways of doing what you do, right? Yep. Because as things change, and you, if you innovate, and I'm like, when I walk in here and look at this space, I mean, you've innovated in a way yeah. that. Well, if you're really not, unique. especially, yeah, and now I that mean, we're in this beverage business, like if you're not innovating, you're dying. Exactly. So. And, exactly. And, and, and when I see the way yeah. you're doing that here, it's the same thing. I'm looking at the bottles. I can't yeah. wait have you, see have you seen them in person? No, no this okay, first great. time. They look amazing. So the bottles are going to be amazing. And the little eight ounce cans. I'm not sure if we have them in here. Yeah, I heard but, about uh, the eight Yeah, they're I'm great too. to see those. I think they're in my office. But, um, yeah. So, Adam told me to ask you. So you got to tell me the Equinox story. Oh yeah. So um, so speaking of gyms, speaking <laughs> of gyms, um, so uh, Danny Erico and his brother Vito uh, were in the construction business, and they were the original founders of Equinox. So, and I'll tell you. Wait this. a minute. Wait a minute. So because I asked Adam this, so the the original founders of Equinox were in. Were construction workers? Easy, easy Construction was the name of the company. No way. I swear to God, they built my loft in New York City, okay? These okay. Super cool guys. Yeah. I mean, unbelievably talented. And they were hipsters when it came to materials. Like, they knew, like, they would find stuff that, I'm, when I'm looking at your space here, I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's got similar, that yeah. kind of vibe where they would find raw stuff that always had a hip kind of quality to it. Anyway, they, they were... They built my apartment and one day he comes in he goes yeah my sister she's got this idea we're gonna i think we're gonna go into that we're gonna buy a health club in uh, in westchester okay what do you think of this name steven and he goes uh equinox I go well, that sounds sounds cool man he shows me hat with a name on it and it looks pretty cool because and what does equinox mean do you know i i, I don't I even mean, know you, you know that's you know whether it's the celestial equinox yeah. or you know it's just this idea of of you know something um it's it's got this grand kind of whatever and, okay but it, i think he just liked the way it sounded yeah. it was different and then they their talent was they had unbelievable eyes for real estate like you have okay. i think and they so they would go to they they started in places that nobody thought was going to catch but boy did they these guys were in the High Line before the High Line became the High Line, no and they way. started there, and and everything else was history. And they um, they grew so quickly because they were doing something, and they innovated in the space. So they had, you know, um, the the place looked different than any other yep. place had yep. ever really been club wise. And then you know it had you know whether whether it was the the shakes you could get there or the the wardrobe you could get the right. the, the, the door you know the his sisters uh, she handled all the the stuff with the wardrobe and everything in the in the house store so they they did a lot of different things and you know listen there's nothing better than having family who's it, when they're in a business all together and they really get along yeah um it it, it you know my family has been yeah. tremendous yeah. Like my brother's gift, worked for me you know? for a long time yeah. yeah his wife works for me yeah, so it's great to have it, him in the family it's great. for sure it's great you know i yeah. mean that you know you know that you know they're going to do it right and they yeah. care you know and um so they, yeah, they, so they did this, and I'll just never forget it. You know, he said, "Oh, you know, the the, the joke is, of course, they sold the business, right, to, and made a made fortune. fortune, right, exactly." And I never got my lifetime membership, and I give him <laughs> shit about that all the time because I That's did, great, I did some advertising yeah. for them because yeah, now uh, it's like three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, some of the clubs are even more. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, um, it was an int It was I, I, I share with you because it was just very interesting the way they came from. You know, like nowhere in terms of like the idea of like going into the fitness business right they were in the construction business yeah but 
they understood they had a certain aesthetic, they had a certain kind of idea, they knew what they liked, knew what they didn't like, and they, you know, they both were they were healthy guys, you know, they were strong yeah. physical guys, um, but it was kind of an astounding thing to watch them grow that business and then turn around and sell it. That's incredible. Later. Yeah, so. and so fine. Now yeah. you're, yeah, you're here. Today. Yeah, yeah. So, but but I see a lot of the same qualities in you that I yeah. see in them. You know, so it's. No, uh, I mean, I've been following you, Equinox yeah. for years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, maybe one day we'll have to I'll see if I can get Danny. I, we ran into each other. We, I, we hadn't seen each other in almost, almost, I'm telling you, like 20 years. Right. And he lives in L.A. now, and he's really, he's been retired for a while since yeah. he sold. But, you know, and did a really interesting thing. He's kind of raised a family, you know, he's been a real present dad for, for a long time. So it's And nice. you're a dad, right? Yeah. I'm a, How many I'm kids a, yeah? Well, I'm a grandfather now. You're a grandfather right? now. Yep. All right. Yep. And I, I've got uh, two children, and uh, I've got one granddaughter and another one on the way. Oh, so, congratulations. Uh, thank you, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. February. I just found out. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting. So that's, that's an amazing. exciting time. Yeah, it's been... I got to tell you, being a grandpa, it's the greatest freaking thing. You gotta, I bet. I dude, bet. You're gonna you're gonna say, wait a second, this this is this is like better than having kids. Really? <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like no, no. It's because well, you get to give them you back. You get to give yeah, them yeah. back. No, no. It's, it's great, but you get to be the you know yeah. the truly. My the parents spoiler. are here now, and, and oh, I love great. having yeah. them here with my I son. I bet. So. I bet they must enjoy. Yeah, it. they it's, love it. It's a great blessing when you have your yeah. parents with you. you know, um, kids so I want to talk a little bit about like where where you are now and like your new projects also like where you're heading. And any any thing, and I don't know, you know, some of the stuff you might not want to let the cat out of the bag, but uh, anything new you're working on, um, some of your new technology too, because I know like the stuff you did with Kevin Durant, that's kind of yeah, new, yeah, yeah, new so technology. I, yeah, so I had this wonderful opportunity uh, with with Kevin Durant and and Rich Kleiman, his business partner, and uh, and so they're both friends, and I and I. Um, we always talked about doing something um, uh, together because Kevin, they both collect my work. And I was like, and and then, of course, you know, COVID happened. And yeah. It was that crazy time. And suddenly the um, Kevin was you know, signed by the Nets and he had his comeback season during yep. COVID. That was it. And I said, well, this is kind of good. We should do something. And so they were able to arrange for me to get a, a permanent viewpoint, literally for 20 games the entire season from one box, an elevated box, and I could leave my tripod there. Everything was left there. So I could set my camera up every game at the exact same angle. And I spent essentially, you know, 20 games capturing Kevin. And I, when I say capturing Kevin, I mean everything Kevin. When Kevin was on the floor, I don't look at anybody else. I was literally just focused on Kevin. Yeah. And so I captured these very unique moments. It's Kevin. such a cool thing. Yeah. Oh, you got to tell cool people to share to that. that. Yeah. That is that be... on your own website? Yes. That, okay. uh, I, I think it is. I'm, I, if not... You do? I don't know if it's on there, but um, it does. It's really like cool. It's, it's really, really crazy cool. piece. Yeah, it's really it, crazy. It's actually mind blowing that it's photography. Yeah, it's a whole new it way. It looks of, like yeah. a video. Yeah. Well, what I did was. It almost, in my, it, like, it looks like a video that was specifically made for a video game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it has was, that. Kind it, it's of, kind of but, a surreal but hybrid. Surreal yeah. realism. Yeah. Like, well, it, it's incredible. What I incredible. wanted to do. Um, uh, you know, honestly, Manning was, I wanted you to look at a photograph in a new way. Yeah. So I, I, I took this, co you know, I collect old, uh, believe it or not, stereoscopic view viewers, literally from the turn of the century. Wait, I've so what's stereoscopic? Stereoscopic. So in the old days, uh, they used to have these cards and they put the two images together and you'd put them behind, there's a lens and you'd get these two like goggles and you'd go up like this and suddenly the picture looks like you're in stereo. It's a basic early, early technology, no, I, but it's really cool. Yeah. And it's like stereoscopic. And so for people who'd never been to those places, you put these stereo view images in. And, and basically there was a thing called the Viewmaster and probably in the 60s and the 70s, you probably have seen this thing. It was called the Viewmaster and it was basically a stereo view front for at home use. Okay. But the ones I'm talking about were they were made out of wood. They were tall. They were really cool. They had like cranks on them. And so I collect these things and I'm fascinated by them because stereo is, is this very early technology, but it's still like really cool. Yeah. And so I thought, started thinking about, wouldn't it be amazing if I could use, take, modernize the, st the idea of what a stereoscopic image is, but actually bring people into it. So um, working with a great team in England, they, they were able to... Um, create actual, uh, so they what they do is digitally, they create uh, visual cutouts of my photograph. And then we are able to map, move a camera into the scene. So what you're seeing is, it's all from a still photograph. It's the, the, the idea that you feel like you're on the court is all created by these stereoscopic woodcuts, you know, almost. And then we were able to animate 
specific moments of Kevin right. in the shot. So we were actually able to move Kevin, uh, whether he's shooting, dribbling, whatever, based on the sequence that I photographed him in. So it was really a complex thing. But when the whole thing came together, like your reaction was what most people yeah, do. Yeah. Most like, people's mouths drop. Well, it's... it's uh, it's like seeing something for the first time. For the first time. Like you've never yeah. seen thank anything you. like that. Just yeah. like your day yeah. and night stuff. Yeah, yeah. When you look at your yeah, thank day you. and night stuff, you're looking at something that is original, that you've never seen before, and and the perspective of it is is incredible. Like, just the fact, I don't know, I just, I, I think it's awesome. No, um, thank you. I, you know what, it's interesting is that what, what I think is, if there's a thread, I love pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. okay and that's what i think what i when i got excited about working with you i know that's where you want to go yes you want to push boundaries and you want to take place take us to places you and know. talk a little bit about the water dog yeah and we'll we'll play it and we'll edit this and play it in the yeah. back but yeah one of the things that i loved about the, the when when you guys con dan contacted me and then i got to meet you yeah i love this idea that for me this was kind of a new role for me you know in a way to be able to work collaboratively like this as like a creative and um, uh, be a creator, but also creative uh, on it. And as soon as I saw the dog, I just said, this dog is it, man. We should, you know, and suddenly we were at the table and I was looking at the cans in person. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, we should, we should make the dog out of water. And I was thinking about how also I knew you loved what I did with Kevin and, and Rich and that whole idea of pushing of the boundaries of what a still photograph could right. be. Right. So then I started thinking about, well, what could you imagine if we could make the dog on the can actually form out of water? Right. And that, and, and you, I could see your eyes light up. I saw everybody in the room, everybody light up. And I said, and I could actually see it in my head. Yeah. To be honest. And it was think, obvious because yeah, the way and, you were and, describing yeah. was so clear yeah. to me. It, and that's it. There's a thing, you know, that, that happens and, and it's like your mind's eye, right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about this a little bit. It's like, you know, there's, when you see it in your mind's eye, it's a magical kind of thing. And not every time that doesn't happen always. Right. But it take and it takes a long time to, I think, evolve as a creative where you think of something and you see it. And the act for me, like now, as somebody's been photographing for so many decades, when I, I don't just take a picture, I see the picture and then I just execute the picture. So I was just about yeah, to say that. Yeah, I think the the gift though is in the execution. Yes. Because there's so many people that have great ideas, right? But they just can't figure out how to how execute do you bridge it? it, right? And like, like when I walked into this space, when I walked into this space, I saw the floating shipping container that we're sitting in. I saw it. Really, I wow. saw it up there. And when I was describing it to the architect and the engineer, they were like, you know, that's impossible. And I was like, well, we'll figure it out, you know, because they said we had to have poles, you know, right. to hold this thing. Right. And sure enough this amazing engineer came up with a way to do it where there's no poles. Amazing. So, so it's literally floating, so it's floating shipping. Yeah, container. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so, But you, but to your, see you, you were, you didn't get, you didn't stop. You found, well, and also yeah, too, yeah. like, yeah, it, we didn't stop. And then for you, like when you came up with the idea of the water yes. dog, okay, so now somebody's got to execute it. Somebody's yes. got to take your idea yes. and put it, so that's when you reached out Which, to right, Trailer, Trailer Park. Park. So and, Trailer Park yeah. has, has been an incredible uh, partner. We've been fortunate enough to work with them on a couple of projects. And we Great have, people, too. Amazing people. As soon as I walked in their yeah. office, their energy. Oh, they're the best. I mean, they are the their best. Their attention. Yeah. They were interested. Exactly. Like, you know, it's something nice to sit with yeah. people that you've never met, and yeah. they listen. Yeah, exactly. And, and they're, in their, they're engaged. That's right. Like, there's something special about they, that. They are know? special. And, yeah. you know, you, you realize, too, you, you look at their, what the work these guys create. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's a Their resume of, is ridiculous. Their resume is ridiculous. It's okay? They're the best of the best. Right. And so it's, you know, they, and they, it, it, it's, you know. Their reel is like, yeah, when yeah. I watch their reel, yeah. I was like, guys, stop showing off. This is ridiculous. Yeah. I like, know, they've ridiculous. done everything. It's, it's, it's incredible. really geniuses. Yeah. And, and the, the, the fact of the matter is that they're, you know, it's, it's great when you meet people that are not only unbelievably talent, but are just such a pleasure to work with, yes. right? That are so professional, rare. and I mean, they're just on it. And so the fact that they were open, they said, yeah, we, we, we'd love to help. We'd love to help you guys. Their excitement about this, I believe is why it came out so good too. Yeah, no question. Because like Digital Domain talked about how they, they, they described it, I wish you were there. It would have been, fab you would have absolutely loved it. But when they were there, they were describing how Imagine someone sitting in a room and working on a movie 
and they're working on the same scene over and over, over again, right? and over again for months, for months, and then getting a call and saying, "Hey, would you like to break free from this and do a really creative like, project?" Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, they're like, Especially "When can I start?" Exactly, water. and they yeah. said that water. And believe it or not, feathers are the two of the hardest things to do. Yes, in, in this in, in this, in this uh, space, right? In this space. So that anything, there are only a handful of companies in the world that can really do this. Yeah, uh, and and they, what I think, what was amazing about them is, uh, they were able to sort of really focus us. And they said, Stephen, okay, here's here's the here are the options, and and then they should they said, wait a second, digital domain. I'm like, I. I watch their work since I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, they I mean, did the Titanic. They did Titan they've done like, everything. I mean, every great scene, you know, it's, it's that incredible. I've ever imagined, they've, they've had their hand on and uh, iconic scene and yes. special effects. And and so when they were interested, I was like, uh, yeah? The, are you serious? And, and was, you know, Trailer was, Park told me that that was their, that that was the only people they wanted to work with. Right, only people. They, they were, were like, like, I didn't oh, want to yeah, work yeah, with anybody, anybody else. else. Yeah. And, and, and it's true. And they, you know, so they, they proposed them, and I was like, uh, uh, you know, I was almost <laughs> stuttering. I said, yeah. they, they want in? Oh, my God, this is amazing. And I think the other thing that was incredible was uh, you talk about timing. You know, we had, uh, obviously, you had the actor strike going on. So a lot of movies were, you know, were on being pause, shelved. Exactly, on pause. Right. And so we normally would never have had, you know, might not have had that window of time. Timing, to again. Get, yeah. you know, it to all get it came together. It all came together. We had a certain time period window-wise yeah. we wanted to launch with. And so it was really kind of an incredible sort of... Um, uh, the, the perfect storm of, of, yes. of excitement yep. to, to happen. And and I think, you know, the process was just really great with them too because I think they took, uh, you know, our input uh, in terms of what we wanted and, and, and they, they kept polishing it. And it, it's, an, it's, you know, it's a very unique medium to work in as you experience. And that is when they create the rough, it's never like the way it looks, right? right. It's never quite the way it looks when it's fully rendered, you know? But you have to have, you know, it's like, like when you walk into a building that's uh, under construction yeah, that's you know, this is going to be the most incredible gym in the world. You saw it that way. Yeah, not people, everybody not, sees not everybody. it that way. Yeah. So it's kind of the same way, I think, yeah. when we were working on the dog, was this idea that it was like, okay, that there was a certain foundational sort of pattern, the shape, the way things were moving, the way things uh, kind of evolve as as the, as the it, it goes from, you know, zero to full. You, you kind of have to sort of buy into the fact, okay, well, we can get this, we're going to get that, and this is going to be fine-tuned. And they delivered, I think, times 10. But actually, you know, it was uh, really... something just pops in my head. Do you, are you uh, very particular with your day and night stuff as far as, like, people seeing it before it's finished? Oh, yeah. I Do you let anybody? No. Not no, even Bet? Only Bet. <laughs> okay, I was about Bet to say. Bet sees it, um, and, you know, it's interesting. Bet has, she says, by the way, my wife... Betty, who's uh, um, Betty Wilkes. And by the way, is it Betty or Bet? Betty. Bet, but she right. like, she'll go by Bet, too. Because I've been calling her yeah. Bet since Bet's I met fine. her. Bet's All right. fine. I don't want to but, but, you know, mess it up. So, so, but she loves She's Bet. amazing. So she is amazing. She's the, uh, I, I get to say, you know, I'm lucky guy. I'm the creative side of my business, and my wife is the business side, and she really allows me to float through life, as I say. But it, the truth it's a is, cool it's a dynamic. real dynamic. Yes. It is, and, and I really feel blessed. And she... You know, is she does say, well, I'm not the creative. She says, but you know what? What's a great gift, and, and I'm sure when you have your wife and you can sound off someone you know, like that who you really respect and you know is going to give you a straight up answer. Yep. Betty will look at something, and I will be struggling with something. This happens, I can't tell you how many times. Something is bothering me that I'm doing in the photograph, and I just can't get my hands on it. And she'll walk over and she goes, Oh, I don't like that thing over there. And I'm like, hey, wait a second. Oh my God, that's what's bothering me. No you know, way. I couldn't put my finger on it. it, but she's like, oh, this thing is like, ah, oh, wait a second. So that's you know, that's a great gift. So yeah, that she's the only one who gets to see. I was I was sitting here thinking about like as we were talking about the the formation of the water dog. I was like, I bet he's very particular about seeing things before they're finished. Yes, because I'm like that. Like yeah. I like I've never been a big fan of of. Uh, sharing too early yeah you know like absolutely well, and you, it's like a, you're a chef in a way right yeah you're like, cooking something up, right man. and it's you like it's what, not you don't want people to taste it before know, all exactly, the seasonings are in there exactly you know? it's not done so, yet man yeah. it's just not gonna taste yeah. as good. even renderings like yeah i've I recently been doing like some really cool renderings and they look amazing and it's great but it's almost like uh, i, I kind of don't want to show people what it's going to look like i'd rather just do it Sure. You know, but it but it certainly helps in business. So. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I get it. You but gotta, I, I'm, I'm totally to. like you. I, yeah. I agree with you. I, it's because 
you know, you're you. It's in your mind, and you're trying to bring it out, right? right. You're doing like we were just talking about, like you articulate it to the designer, the architect, whatever it is that the plan is, and then it's it's constantly you're like chipping away at that stone, yeah. And you don't want anybody to see that stone before right. it actually Until looks it's like absolutely something. Finished. Right? Exactly. Yep. exactly. So exactly. I get it, man. It's you know, it's and that's a hard thing, but that's part of you know. I, I always I always say this that creative the process of creating anything, right? And and, and and believe me when, you know, you always say, you say, oh, you know, you're super creative because I can see your hand on everything here. This this idea of being able to get your vision to that point where it's like you feel like, okay, now I can let it go. Yeah. That's when people can judge it. You know what I mean? Right. But, it, but, it's, but you always feel like, you know, I got to at least let me do my thing. Right? And are you very hard on yourself like once, like so, you know, you finish, you release a new project. Are you always a hundred percent satisfied with the project? Or yeah, that's is- a great question. I think that you know, there's a a moment. Look, all art and artists, I think, and and, and I think the, the human nature is a certain insecurity. Did it? Did I? Did, could I've done more? Could I've done a little less? Could I've cut here? Could I've built that a little differently? Right. Whatever it is, there's always some kind of doubt a little bit. I think what I try to do is I, I get to this point uh, with an image and I just, I look at it, you know, I'll make a big print like on a wall like this and, and I just stand back and I look at it and I'll leave it up there and I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll do this for about a week yeah. and I'll just look at it and um, I'm viewing it now as a, just a piece of artwork and then I get to this moment where I just feel like it's, it's, it's my eye moving through it. I always say that that when there's a dance going on between, you know, where the human eye begins to move and stays in an image or a painting, this is what I love about art, where it draws me in, it moves me around, I come back out, and every time I look at it, I see something different. If I have that thing going on, then I'm ready to let you're, go. You're at peace with it. Yeah, then I'm at peace. And with you it. have you ever had anybody look at your art and give you just some off the wall interpretation? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, it's really funny. Sometimes people don't even realize that time is changing in the picture, you know, and that's really interesting. Yeah. Does it but, frustrate you a little bit? Well, you know, it's interesting. I don't, I think that's part of the the the, the magic of it in a way. I feel like if, if I want you to just be in awe of the image, right? Right. You know, like you walk in, you look at the photograph and you go, that's so cool. That's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Then come a little closer. That's, oh my god that's the right to me that's what i found the beauty in it yeah is coming closer it yeah. it draws you in yes and then all of a sudden you start to see the person reading the book over here yes all the little stories the little, that are going on that's right. right i didn't even realize that yeah until yeah. i watched your yeah. ted talk and it yeah. described it see the narrative yeah and the the ted talk you have to watch his ted talk thank you man the, where the screen Yes, behind moves. you moves. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's, it's so crazy. cool. You could, I wish you could have seen that in person. Oh I mean, my it gosh, was, it, it would have been were, amazing. People were gasping. You know, it was. You like, know what you? Yeah, it was you're, crazy. You should do this at the Sphere. Yeah, that would be you pretty cool. You should do a, like a TED yeah. Talk at the Sphere. Yeah, have yeah. your work. Yeah, like, move that around would be like that. Fascinating. Yeah, it would be pretty crazy. That'd be to really do that. cool. Yeah, yeah. We gotta get the water the dog in the Sphere yeah. too. <laughs> that would be cool. I remember telling that would be amazing. That's gonna be three million dollars. I was like, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, really. Tell me your your new oh, project. So, new project. New project. so um, well, obviously, I'm very excited about what we're doing here. Yes, with and we're not even done. And we're that. not. Yeah, yeah. Because so I already and we got to talk. We got to talk. We got we got a bunch other, of things yeah, exactly. to cook with. Um, and I'm um, actually right now developing another project where I'm um, going to be dealing with uh, America. Uh, for the 250th anniversary of America. Oh, so, wow. yeah, which I'm excited about. That sounds about. really so cool. So really cool. So, yeah, I can't go more into detail, but it's it's. We got to get our freedom cans. You've seen our freedom cans? No, no, no. All right. Well, we oh, got to talk okay, about the freedom yeah. cans. So. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm also developing, um, I'm, I'm developing an idea for a show, um, a series of my work where I become a guide uh, through taking people through this, what the things that I've been experiencing, uh, documenting um, endangered species and habitats for oh, the wow. last several years. Is that with National Geographic? Yeah, with Geographic, and, and we're, we're sort of developing now as a programming thing. So it's we'll see it, where it goes, but it's, cool. it's exciting, and I think it, it, um, 
it's a way, you know, I'm about messaging, you know, yep. and so this is a way for me, I think, to tell these stories that I'm experiencing firsthand. Uh, you know, I get to, you know, I'll get to these remote places. I get to meet these incredible indigenous uh, cultures that I, I get to, you know, spend time with. Yeah, that and, animal. Yeah. Talk about incredible. Yeah. That had to have been, yeah. like you said, biblical moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I can't even imagine. It, it is, you know, the things I get to see, honestly, uh you know, like I said, that's why the, I, I really do feel they, they change your consciousness. Yeah. Because when you get to study wildlife for 24 to 36 hours, you see behavior that most scientists don't see. Right. You know, most scientists, to be frank, uh, will set up, you know, cameras. They sit time lapse. And when they get an animal, you know, they'll study that. They'll get out in the field. But they're not standing and looking at a place for 36 hours. That just doesn't happen in the most part. So I get to see things in a way that... Uh, that just change your perception, you know, really, yeah. they really do. And so that's, you know, part of the thing I'm interested in doing is like, how do I bring other people, you know, on a big, big, broad level to be able to have that kind of experience? It'd be like the next uh, Morgan Freeman on our planet. There you, you know, go, the, maybe, the yeah, I, I, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I would be I would be the guide. I love that, those yeah. shows. Like yeah, they're great. I'll watch yeah. them, and they're yeah. fascinating. Yeah. They're fascinating. But you know, I bet. David Attenborough, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, he's, he's really, I mean, think about what he's done. Um, in our planet and that whole series, um, how that's changed perception yes. of, of the way people think about wildlife and our planet. And I, what I'm trying to do is, um, is, 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 is do something, you know, it's, it's, it's own different, it's a unique thing, but I, I'm trying to bring people into a way of looking, uh, and through my process in a way that sort of, they, they become really inspired by what, by what they're seeing and by the the idea of actually walking in my shoes, so to speak, like coming well, coming with me on a journey. Be, I think you know? to me, what it's going to do, because it did it for me, is it's going to increase the appreciation of your work. Oh, thank you to That's, another level. Yeah, because I think I think again, it goes back to like people see something, but they don't understand the process, and they don't see what it took to get to the end result. Then there's not there's not a level of understanding that I think need in my opinion needs to happen yeah so if you could walk us through that process through like a tv show yeah oh my gosh i mean you yeah, talk about pretty, people yeah. being glued in yeah like, that's great Thank i think you. that's tremendous so yeah good luck well you that. know i appreciate that so much i i, I think it's it's a uh, listen the the, the the gift is a uh, my, my dad had a friend she said so the gift is in the giving yes and and you you know if um if i could share that these experiences that i'm so fortunate to see and be part of um, and that well, process. Well, again, you just said it. You're, yeah. you're, you're doing things that scientists don't even get to do. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're one of few people in the world getting to experience these things and to be able to share that is going to be a, yeah. a gift and yeah, it's no, be amazing. Thank you. That's, that's, yeah. that's the hope. So fingers crossed. We'll yes. see where it goes. Brother, well, but, we uh, got a lot of work. We to have do a lot too. of work to do here. So, so uh, I appreciate you. Uh, um, mutual. It's, it's already been like just tremendous getting to know you and talk and likewise just, you're just like our conversations around, are brother, like so. i love how we just yeah. go back and forth and um i'm inspired and and i think uh again yeah. i think we're just getting started so yeah yeah i'm excited i'm awesome. excited about next steps thank you it's been a pleasure to yes, talk sir. to you as always